Welcome back to Hudson's Hideout YouTube channel. Uh, today's going to be a little bit of, it might be boring for some. This is going to be one of those historical deep dives that I like to do. Uh, we're going to be looking at GMT's Barbarossa Army Group North, the learning scenario, um, which I've never played. Uh, the straight out learning scenario. So what I'm going to do is um, there's a walkthrough of the learning scenario for AGN on the GMT site. Um, someone wrote it up. I don't I don't know who. The game came out 20 years ago, I believe. And I don't know how long that document's been up there. So if you wrote it or know who wrote it, let me know. Because what I did was I took that document and... We're going to follow through with the move by move up what they do, but I also took it and exported it uh, as a Word document. Then I added a table of contents and page numbers to it um, because what I noticed was it was organized so that if you were to you know flip through the pages and, and turn the pages over and got them mixed up, you wouldn't know what turn or what was happening on it. So... I then took that and re-imported it as a PDF, and it's a link on my blog. Uh, I can't put it on Board Game Geek because they they want to know who did it originally. I have no clue. Um, I have no idea. So if you wrote it or know who wrote it and give me permission, I can put it on Board Game Geek. It's just more organized. I didn't change anything. So uh, anyway, past that, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the units taking part in that learning scenario and it's uh around Soltsy, i believe is the name of the town the learning scenario uh, a bunch of little towns coming up around uh utgorash utorgash utorgash is on that map one of the ones involved here as we look at the atlas of world war ii battles is the eighth panzer right there the eighth panzer division is in this and here we've got uh a few regiments and a recon battalion from the 8th Panzer in this tutorial scenario. Um, so just looking at some of the units in it, and I've done this on a couple of other videos. Uh, we have recon here, and I believe, man, I'm not sure what the orange is. Let me take a look at the, let me take a look at the axis units here. Ground units brown. I don't think that's brown. Uh, Patrol listed. German Panzer and motorized formations. Each major formation has a distinctive color, which all component units share. I'm going to guess that's orange for these guys. But there it is, right there on the map. And we're looking around 1941 or so. And further up the map, of course. Whoop, there goes my stand is Leningrad, Leningrad. You can see some of the early moves here, but we're focusing right down here and some of the units that took part in this. So the here we have the 8th Infantry Regiment of the 8th Panzer, and that's how you read these. Okay, and we have some of the elements here. Um, let me get the brightness up here for you and let's zoom in. We've got a 8th Motorized Infantry Regiment of the 8th Panzer. That's what uh, this little marker is right there. Okay. Here is uh, a 10th Armored Regiment of the 8th Panzer right there. That little... We're looking at this unit on the map. And then here is a the 50... Uh, let me get... Man, my eyesight is really gone here. 59th Recon Battalion of the 8th Panzer Division. Whoops. Who says I can't use tweezers? So in this scenario, these guys right here are included. Now, 
there is a little rule in the game called uh, Panzer Division Integrity. And I think that's what they're shooting to give you here. Um, in order to get Panzer Division Integrity, you have to have one of each element of a Panzer Division. So here's Armor, Infantry, and Recon, right? And let me see if I can show that to you on the play aid here. We're just going to zoom out a little bit and pull that up. And Panzer Division Integrity is here. And you can see you need armor, infantry, plus this or that. So there's the recon element. So we would have Panzer Division Integrity. I'm pretty sure they gave us that in the learning scenario for learning purposes, of course. Uh, it's minus one DRM per Panzer Division or Qualified Motorized Division attacking available in all weather conditions. Um, now, there must be a qualifying Panzer Division present for each qualifying Motorized Division for the Motorized Division to receive the bonus. Okay, to qualify, none of the component units can bear an out-of-supply marker unless they use attack supply. Each qualifying division generates the combat DRM. I believe in this example we'd only get that one. Um, combined arms, uh, let's see. Armor or that and that plus this and that. We could get a combined arm bonus, combined arms, but the defenders can't have any of this in there. Hmm, interesting. So combined arms would probably apply to that also, I'm thinking. Interesting. So I'm pretty sure that's in there just for that purpose. All right, so... Let's take a look at the 8th Panzer and what happened to it. Let me see if I can get this up here. And yeah, I do highlight the hell out of my Slaughterhouse book because there's so much info in it that, you know, it's not easy to track all the things that you're looking for when you're recording. So it looks like they were formed from the 3rd Light Division in October of 1939 here. Okay, they took part in Poland, France, Balkans, and here they are. The offense, offensive opens Eastern Front and Northern Sector, and this is about where we are right now. Uh, and then they, uh, let's see, Defensive Retrograde opens East Central Sector they took part in. Uh, they were involved in defense in the Ukraine, Kiev, Zitromir. Uh, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, they capitulated in May of 45, and that was the end of the 8th Panzer Division. Uh, some of the commanders. I think our current commander would be, let's see, right about in here. Neumann Silk, Lieutenant Neumann Silkow, Lieutenant Hurner. I think we're about in here. I apologize if I'm massacring these names. I think we're right about here. The first one was General Lieutenant Knutson. I said that. I said that right. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Uh, so there's your list of commanders, all the way down to the final commander here. That actually might go to the next page because we know they didn't capitulate till May, and there it is, right there, up at the top. Heinrich Jörg Hox, January to May of forty-five, was the final. Was the final commander. Uh, it'd be interesting to look some of these people up. Uh, so what I might do is in this video is cut in some images of some of these uh, commanders if I can find them. And now let's take a look at some of the other units. So that's, I'm pretty sure that these guys are put in there strictly for the purpose of giving us that uh, Panzer Division integrity and maybe to learn that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that these are probably, the, this is probably the best set of units that I have in the tutorial. Um, looking at the things that are included. So um, it took me a while to even find where we were on the map. We're right about, we're, set, we're right in this area. All right, so let's get the learning tutorial so you can see what it looks like. So here's the small section we're dealing with for the learning tutorial. And here's Utgorgash, Utgor, Utgorgash, Utorgash. I don't know, that's a hard one to pronounce. 
I should have looked that up before I got on video, so I apologize. Usually I do that. Um, and your victory locations are marked with stars on the map here. You can see that. Now we do have some other elements that come in uh, as reinforcements later on. And here's the rest of the 8th Panzer, right? Here's one. So we get another uh, infantry regiment here, motorized infantry regiment, the 28th. So there is one more that comes in as reinforcements on game turn 12. This game starts on turn 11. It's one of those odd ones that starts July 12th through the 13th on turn 11 here. Um, and then you can see all the forces. And now we have some SS up here that we have to kind of look up and see what the deal was with those guys. Uh, let's just kind of take a look at that real quick. So, yeah, if you look at the map, we're a little bit south of that of that town. Um, you can see that here. So, yeah, we're definitely at this part of the offensive here. The, uh, uh, you know, going up at the start. You, this is probably what we're focused on for this scenario. So pretty accurate. Um, and again, I'm not sure if I can find any mention on the SS. Yeah, it looks like they gave us a whole, this is another combined arms. I, well, at least motorized, but you'd have to have a matching um, Panzer unit for these. So I believe this might be Totenkopf? Totenkopf? I'm not sure. The TK? They had a police force up in this area. Uh, not the nicest people. <laughs> uh, not a good record. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out. I know I have this one. Yeah, so that's the, let's see. One, okay, the that's a 329. There and there. Okay, so these, these units are pretty strong. Um so this one's going to be hard to look up. I need to look up and see who that is. The Atlas is nice, but it doesn't do a good job of having an index, which makes it not fun. Uh, so we're going to have to check. Man, I don't know. It's just SSTK would be... I'm going to guess that's just... I didn't... Totenkopf, I think, but that's going to be a tough one to look up here. Uh, I have to go in the slaughterhouse and look up SS. We got a regiment, a battalion, a regiment. That's going to be weird. I'm going to have to see where to try to find that. Yeah, the rank is a General Leutnant. G-E-N period L-T, General Leutnant. And you have General Major, Oberst, Oberst Leutnant. And the rank's about that. Hauptmann, Rittmeister, Oberleutnant, etc. All right, we got to find this unit here. So this one doesn't break it down much easier, uh, but it's going to be interesting. Um, no index in this one either, so. All right, I think I'm going to have to wing this here. Waffen SS Divisions. Let's see what I can find. Third Panzer Division. Third SS Panzer Division Totenkopf. Let's see here. That's... That one's going to be tough. That might be some elements of the 3rd SS Panzer Division, because it does say uh, June 41, offense, offensive opens across Baltic states and northern Russia, then defensive fighting. So th that may be just elements of that. It looks like they had a few elements up there. Uh, that could be what we're looking at at that point. Um if that's true, then at that point, the commander would be Kepler, I believe, looking at this. July through September of 41 would be Kepler. He followed up Ike. I believe that's the proper one. But just looking in here, I'm not 100% sure. That, so that could be an element of that. I think that's who we're looking at there. Um, so they're going on the map, but they come in game turn 13. So we don't see them on the board for a while. 
And you can see where they come in. I'm just going to put them back up here. I have everything laid out according to the turn they come in. Some of these we're not going to do a deep dive on, but I am curious as to what that... Uh, I believe that's just the third. So this is the 29 or the third motorized, I believe. So it'd be interesting to see if we can find the third motorized. Yeah, it's got to be a division or it's just a regiment. But I wonder if there's a third motorized division. So I'm going to look that up and let's see if we can find what became of that unit. Yeah, so I believe we're looking at... That would be an element, uh, the 29th Regiment of the 3rd Motorized Division. I believe that would be 3rd Motorized Infantry Division. Here we see uh, it is listed as Northern Sector right there. Eastern Front, Northern Sector. So I believe that's what we're looking at. Just an element. Um, and that would make the commander General Lieutenant Jan. May of 41 through April of 42. So I think that's what we're looking at right there. So that appears to be accurate. And joining them also is a recon battalion right there. So you can see the German, the strengths in this scenario, their counters are pretty strong, but they don't, they don't really, the, the Russian counters are pretty weak. Um, if you look at a lot of them have lost a step. So if you look across here, uh, they have some, they have a lot, but they're really weak. I've got um, several when I put them down, I had to flip over to donate a step loss. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> denote a step loss. I'm not donating anything. We've got an artillery unit up here. Uh, I don't know if we want to look that up or that one might be hard to look up. Uh, I did flag some of these in the book ahead of time, but once you start doing it live, it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, so it appears that this all pans out. It looks like it's pretty accurate. Um, the only thing I can't find on the map are, <clears throat> I found we found this town, but I don't see this one or some of these other ones, like Shimsk and ones like that. Um, I don't see that coming up, unless the Atlas really, and zooming in, here we go, right to the west of the lake, you can see everything matches up here, Shimsk, here is Soltsy. And you can see that whole area that we're fighting. Pretty, it, it matches pretty well. And there's the lake area. I've got to tighten my tripod here just one second. You can see where that pans out pretty well there. So the map is pretty accurate. And if you put them side by side, you can see how zoomed in we are. So let me try that. And you can see where that river is coming right there. And that would match perfectly with the book right up there. And you can see the uh, disposition of the German units uh, on this map here. There's that SS division. And that one just says... I'm going to guess T, we could be right on that. And there's a 20th Infantry. And that one is not, is that one present in the game? I don't see it listed on here. That might be something different. And it also shows you the front lines and everything like that. So you can see what we're dealing with. And then down here, you can see Soviet pockets and counter offensive. Uh, offensives that they did coming right up through here. So we're really just concerned about this area. Right there. All right, how about some of the Soviet units? Uh, how about the 3rd Tank Division? Right here is what we're looking at. Now this unit is coming in at 325. And that is a knockdown. So that's a step loss all the way from that. So this one's coming in with a step loss, reduced strength. The third tank division. Now in the Atlas, the only sighting that we have of this 
uh, division is here north of the lake, right, right there, whereas we're dealing with that area right there. So this is the only sighting we see of this up there by Nov Novgorod. Um, but we're dealing with them. This unit comes in in hex 3231. So I'm wondering if that comes down from the north side, which is interesting. So I'm kind of curious as to what happened to this division because we're really focused in this whole area here. Let's see if we can find out some detail on that unit because well, it seems like they kind of vanished because I don't see them on the bigger uh, map later on. All right, so for this one, I had to go to the tablet and look up, literally Google this. So it looks like it was part of the first mechanized core and it looks like the first establishment of this was it lasted through Janu January through August of 41 and then it was disbanded and reformed in August of 42. So I think the problem with these lesser known units is that so many of them got wiped out early on that they, they would come back in, uh, under different formations and things like that. So it looks like this may have been part of the Soviet first mechanized tank core, I think. That's what I can find on it. Because uh, when you Google it here, it does come up um, under tank divisions. They were short-lived. In the face of the German invasion of 1941, many poorly maintained vehicles were abandoned, and those that did meet the Germans in battle were defeated by the superior training, doctrine, and radio communications of the Panzertruppe. The magnitude of defeat was so great that the mechanized corps parent headquarters of the tank divisions were either inactivated or destroyed by July 1941. And I think that is what we're looking at here. So third tank division is listed. I don't know if we can get that in here. Right there. I'll get the glare off for you. Uh, with the first mechanized corps in June of 1941. And that matches up with the scenario. So I, I'm pretty much, I'm thinking that this unit just got obliterated uh, out of the history books. That's what I'm thinking. A lot of these Soviet ones are going to do that. And that's that's usually why you don't see me covering too many of the Soviet uh, units and things like that. Here's another one, for example, 21st Tank. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's another one. And uh, if you scroll down here, the 21st Tank Division was with the 10 Mechanized Corps in June of 41 had about 201 or 217 tanks. By October, uh, it became part of the 54th Army, but had no tanks remaining. So, sad history for that one. Uh, it's very interesting to see what happened, you know, where some of these ended up. Um, but yeah, I had to, I had to kind of deep dive and try to find that. So the 21st, the Slaughterhouse book is rough with the, with the Russian stuff. 21st Tank Division was part of 10th Mechanized Corps. So uh, you kind of have to look it up by the Mechanized Corps. Um, it's a whole different ball of wax here. So you can see where it actually got disbanded right at the end of this tutorial scenario is my guess. We're literally in July right now. So I'm thinking that, um, yeah, it, got, it came back here. It had three commanders. They don't even list the commanders. They don't even list them. So... I find that pretty interesting. So a lot of this stuff got disbanded. So that, that's why, you know, you don't see me spending too much time on those Soviet units unless they're like guard units. Now, a guard unit was formed. A guard unit was a unit that's kind of promoted and given special credibility because they do so well. They get, like, promoted to a guard unit. Um, but you don't see in this learning scenario, you're not going to see any of those really because uh, this, this is strictly early war stuff. A uh, guard unit is indicated with a red, it'll have a red background here. Uh, and you see one of those on the board and that's how you know, you're, you know, it's like, oh great, I got, I got to do something about that unit now. Uh, now, like I said, I'm going to be going through, uh, someone did a walkthrough for this. There is a walkthrough in Army Group North playbook, uh, but it's hideously... Uh, it's rife with errors and such. So um, we're not going to be following the one in the book. You have to go to the go to the GMT site on the Army Group North page, and it's it's listed there. And like I said, if you know who did it, um, 
let me know. I've got it. I have one with, it's got table of contents and it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit better off. Uh, it's easier to look things up. So, uh, and in the playbook for Army Group North, it looks like that, the Battle of Sultsi. And I believe some other YouTubers may have done it too, but basically they took this and they, they retyped it and fixed some of the typos in it. So then I took their document and added page numbers in the table of contents. Um, it's in a PDF. I can't remember if I made it with a clickable, um, the ability to click and go down. So I still have to put some stuff out like the turn record tracks um, the VP markers and things like that. And the great thing, I did post this on my Twitter, but the great thing about this is that um, this learning scenario, I wish they would do more of these. You don't see too many of these. And the, the good thing about it is everything you need is right here on this map. Let me lose that glare for you real quick here. I think that's just a great touch. I know it costs extra to print it and everything, but you've got, you literally got movement charts, uh, tra you know, train effects table, uh, the air combat stuff is on here. Really, the only thing, it's even got the ready boxes. The only thing that you're going to need is uh, the combat chart, the combat results table. And it's even got the, you know, the victory, the victory points uh, marked out for you on here. So I think that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is set these units out according to turn one. And um, since I'm re-familiarizing myself with these rules, uh, I'm going to, let me just slide that back over. And they're going to last. Okay. I'm going to kind of walk through what they do uh, in the learning scenario. And then if I feel like I want to make changes or try something different, I'll do it like on the fly. Uh, but at the start... Uh, the Axis is going to have these units, and then the Soviet units um, are scattered here with some strong points and an HQ. And if you need to know what the HQs do, I do have a video for that up on my YouTube channel. Um, and a lot of people have been playing this game. There's a lot of East Front videos. Uh, not lately, though. Although, uh, check out Hex to Hex. Check out his YouTube channel. He has, he actually finished a whole game. So it's kind of nice to see that. So, and uh, some of the videos that people do are like three minutes long, but his videos are actually, he, he goes through and shows you what happens. Um, he doesn't ramble on as much as I do. Uh, so check his videos out. Another one is, there's a guy called East Front Gamer, I believe. And a guy called, uh, he did a tutorial by, I can't remember his YouTube channel name. It's like Blah Blah or something. It's really weird, but... Um, he did, he did a learning series of videos and even quizzes you in there. So, um, I'll try to get the links. Everyone probably knows hex to hex, but I'll put, um, I'll put his YouTube channel, uh, in my, you know, the description of this video and I'll try to put the other people in there. Um, and then I'll try to put a link to my blog with that updated, um, example of player that playthrough. Uh, all right, who else do we want to look at here? Anyone on... We looked at pretty much everyone on the German side. I wonder if we can drill down and see, for example... Well, something like the 803 Artillery uh, Regiment is going to be hard to look up, I think. I don't think that's going to be doable. We can always give it a shot and see what happens. Uh, I don't know if the Slaughterhouse is that in-depth. It's usually... It usually just wants to know the top level stuff, but finding this little artillery regiment, I mean, I'm gonna guess these guys were, history has forgotten about them, unfortunately. Um, but the big Panzer divisions and things like that. Uh, and the SS TK, damn, that's bothering me. Is that Totenkopf? I think it is. I think that's an element of them. If anyone knows, I'm gonna have to Google that and, and kind of look that up um, and see what we're looking at here. The Atlas, uh, don't think it mentions it. I can try to find out and skim through it. Uh, the Atlas kind of goes all over here. These would be the battles near Staria. Um, uh, let's see. 
Vatutin had remnants still, so Vatutin was involved in this. Um, yeah, Totenkopf. Yep. It is them. Okay. Uh, after secretly moving 150 miles at night, Manstein was ready to attack. Beginning on the 19th of August, so that's past this, past this scenario. Beginning on the 19th of August, he coordinated three, the 3rd Infantry Division motorized on the right and Totenkopf on the left against leading elements of the 34th Army. This time, Kachinov... Kach... 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 Kach wow, these names. Uh, this time, Kachinov was surprised, and when the two German divisions met at Velikoy Selo on the 20th of August, most of the 202nd, 245th, 262nd Rifle, and the 25th Cavalry Division, 18,000 men in total, were trapped. And... A little history on the Kach, Kach, man, I cannot say these Soviet general names. Kachinov, um, he was trapped in a pocket that Manstein set up. Uh, he was court martialed on twenty seventh of September and executed two days later. So that's very Stalin like. Uh, that sounds typical. Um, and you can see, I believe here they actually have that laid out right there in the atlas. And that would be this pocket here. Um, so that didn't end up so well. So that would be the pocket. Uh, I, if I could say the names, I'm sorry I massacred the names. Sorry about that. Uh, we should actually probably look that guy up. I'm curious to see how that name is pronounced. Yeah, a little bit of searching. It was definitely difficult to find this guy. Uh, you know, there's not much on him, uh, sadly. Um, there he is. I found him. Kuzma Kachanov was his name um now interesting he was uh here's his history you can see his uh service history here yeah you can see his service history here uh and then you can see of course uh sadly right here commanding officer of 34th army now this is uh a little bit later on after this scenario but i thought this is interesting that this guy was surrounded in that pocket um with eighteen thousand men in total that were trapped um, he became the commanding officer here. He was condemned to death and executed. And then in 1958, it looks like he was pardoned. Uh, that's what I'm reading here. Uh, but there he is. So just one short month after this learning scenario, it looks like uh, a bunch of people will be encircled to the south of this location. Um, and... As you know, Stalin uh, does not like it when you surrender or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of a sad story. But anyway, that's uh, that's kind of how you go down a history rabbit hole there. It's kind of a scary thing. Anyway, uh, that's him. So as you can see, most of the time, the history of these uh, Russian units, it's... Um, a lot of them don't end up well. Until later on in the war when they're... Units were more stable, like guard units and things like that. That's when you start to, you know, get a history for some of these uh, Russian units. Um, and, you know, they have more of a story to tell because they, la they last longer. Early in these scenarios, these guys just got obliterated. So, uh, like, I'm sure, like, 7th, 70th Infantry, you're, you know, you're not going to find. Most of these are going to be wiped out. Uh, if you want, we can do a deep dive on the 7, 70th in Infantry Division, which is a very strong unit. This is a 664 unit um, that I'm going to have to deal with during this. So, um, Also, one of the rules I'm going to be using is the solo dummy air unit rules that they have, the solitaire rules. You mix one of these in and you could pull a dummy unit when you're trying to do an air mission. And basically, if that happens, you know, that's like you got... Um, one of your air, you know, one of your missions got canceled, or maybe the weather was bad, or something like that, and it doesn't it doesn't go off. So, um, I think that that could be kind of interesting. Um, yeah, wow, it's it's amazing some of the stuff you can find. But it took me a while to Google that guy. Yeah, Slaughterhouse doesn't even cover the seventieth. But here's what I was telling you about um, the guards, uh, how. They would have to do something. Um, so, for example, here's the first guards. Now, this doesn't have to do with this scenario, but first 
First Guards Moscow Rifle Division, formed in Moscow as the First Moscow Proletarian Division, reformed in the First Moscow Motorized Rifle Division. Defensive battles near Sumy and Moscow, and you can see here they were honored and renamed as the First Guards Moscow Rifle Division. So they became a guard unit here. Um, and you can see that they did so well in the defense of Moscow, they actually got that honorary title. And, and then you can see where the book starts to track, track these guys because they had more of a history. So I thought that was kind of interesting. When I do the walkthrough, when I, when I put this video up, I'll inter, intercut um, some pictures and things like that of stuff that I find. And, you know, it kind of helps the visual instead of just staring at this map the whole time. Uh, while I'm here, I do want to give a shout out to some people that have commented on my videos. Um, I'm having trouble tracking um, new comments. I go into YouTube Studio. Oh, I don't even have it installed on this tablet. When I go in there, um, I don't know, it doesn't refresh and show me like, it doesn't immediately show me the latest comments. I have to do like a lot of filtering. So if I miss your comment on my older videos, I apologize. Um, I usually have to go back and like look things up. Um, some of the recent commenters, uh, JS commented on my OCS in my East Front series. Occasional Gamer, you've been commenting a lot on my channel. I do appreciate that. Um, you've been dropping comments all over and keeping the activity on my videos. Hex to Hex, of course. Uh, War of the Rats, I believe Italian, if I'm not mistaken. He does Italian EFS videos, I think. If I'm wrong there, let me know. Uh, unfortunately, I don't speak your native language, so I don't, I do watch your videos because they're interesting, but I don't, uh, know what you're saying really, so I apologize for that, but thanks for commenting. Um... Doug Cooley came in uh, four days ago on my air interception Zock negation OCS video and commented. Appreciate that. The Fox and Dog commented on my stuff. Occasional Gamer again. I already mentioned him. Doug Cooley again. I really appreciate him coming in and he uh, really laid a lot of answers for me on the OCS stuff. Kevin Thatcher commented on my old Red Storm Aerial combat video. I won't be going back to that game. Way too freaking complicated. I'm sorry. Um, way too complicated. Uh, so yeah, that's our my main commenters have been Occasional Gamer, Hex to Hex, War of the Rats, JS, um, Doug Cooley. So I do appreciate you guys dropping by. Uh, I don't think you guys have a channel. I know Hex to Hex has a channel. I'll try to link that. I'm not sure though. Some of the other guys I looked and they didn't have any videos except for War of the Rats. So I'm not sure if you guys are um, doing war game videos or if you have anything you need me to pimp out for you. Um, occasional Gamer. Let's see if he's got anything here. I don't want to catch myself on video. Oh, let's see. Yeah, War of the Rats has been on that one. And we do have a lot of stuff. I got a lot of comments on my OCS videos, which is good to see. Because um, I wasn't sure if I was doing a lot of them even right. So it's good to see some people pop in there. Uh, and I'll just read that straight uh, out. Let's see here. Yeah, Occasional Gamer is commenting a lot on stuff. Okay, Occasional Gamer does not have any videos, so... Yeah, if you've got a channel and, you know, you got some videos up there, the more we grow this community, the better. So, um, if I missed your comments, just let me know because I'm horrible at trying to find the latest comments of people commenting on my stuff here. Um, yeah, that's all I saw, really. Yeah, let me know if I missed your comment, though. Looking back through here. I'm going back pretty far. Wardrobe, thanks for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate it. Yeah, it looks like most of those have been most of my commenters. Um, all right, so I'm going to get this video up, and that's kind of a historical deep dive. I like to know what the story behind some of these units are. Unfortunately, these guys, 
Uh, there's not much to tell there other than they probably got obliterated, sadly. Okay. Um, and I'm also curious as to why only certain elements of this SS unit are present here. I don't know, I'll have to check up on that. All right, uh, I'll try to make this video as entertaining as possible. Sorry it was boring, but I got to do some history stuff every now and then. And thanks for watching if you managed to make it through this whole thing. The next video I put up is going to be more East Front, but it's going to be a walkthrough, uh, kind of following along with that document. And just to get that up for posterity and to keep it on the interwebs forever in case something happens to that document or whatever. Um, if you want to follow along, I will link it in my video. It's up on my blog. Um, it's in my Google Drive. It's a public shared link. I think I did that right. So, All right. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll be back later. Mm -hmm.